Who was it that said it's better to be lucky than good? We're going to talk about some happy accidents today on the Vincent Family Homestead. Stay tuned. Before we talk about happy accidents, let's talk turkey. Before we get started talking about the pumpkins, a lot of people have asked about the turkeys and how the turkeys are doing. So I thought I'd take a few moments to show you what's going on with the turkeys as they get accustomed to their new home with the rest of the flock and the chicken coop. Now one of the things that we've learned about turkeys is turkeys behavior is, is a lot different than that of the chicks. Usually within a day or maybe one or two days of getting out from under the heat lamp and coming out of the main door you see here, the chicks can get in and out pretty easily by themselves. It's taken the turkeys almost four or five days of being in and out and us actually having to come out and put them in at night, which has been kind of tedious since it has rained, I mean, like Noah's flood for the last week. So most of our nights of this last week have been in the mud, putting turkeys away. But they started learning and as of today, they were able to go in and out of that, that house, the, the uh, roosting house by themselves, which is a good thing because that means it's a lot e easier for us to manage. They just go in there to make sure they're okay uh, to go now eventually what will happen is is this area here as you can kind of see maybe that area was an addition to the original coop space we run we built here when we were actually keeping them pinned all day before we started free ranging them and we added this space here which this right now the chickens are really not in this space all day they get out in the morning and they're about the property um, but right here we're going to build a roosting area for the turkeys so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get them to roost in this area and, and, and stay in this locality if we want to be uh, for the flock which is kind of cool because within this small area I'd say I think it's 25 by 50 we're able to house a lot of um, birds in one area and like I said then they're out on this property which they free range all day long so that's pretty cool so eventually They'll be roosting here. We should be able to show you guys some videos as we get that built. But right now they're doing really well. We lost one. Unfortunately, that happens. If you buy chickens, you buy turkeys, or you hatch them, we have hatched several birds this year. You're going to lose some. That's a part of it. You, one of the things we've learned is you, you have to get more than you need because the loss is a part of agriculture. That's a philosophy that we've been a mantra that we've practiced here. Loss is a part of ag agriculture. So if you have failures particularly when you're getting started, don't think you're the first person to do that and don't think that ever really goes away. You just get better at, at uh, lessening the failure. So, uh, but so far so good out of 10 turkeys <laughs> this run. Of course, if you looked at the story previous to the turkey, uh, the turkey Day story, you can see we kind of have a, a hard start on this year with turkeys. Hopefully we'll have some really nice, beautiful turkeys by uh, Thanksgiving to go with our pumpkins that we've grown by accident. So that should be pretty cool. So we really wanted to grow a pumpkin. It's not a pumpkin pillow. Yeah, but this it's still not a pumpkin. This, this has to be closed. I mean, this, this round. It's still not a pumpkin pillow. We have been trying to grow pumpkins here for at least three years now. Uh, I thought it'd be really cool to have pumpkins that we had grown and that they would be here as a decorative thing and we can make pumpkin pie and 
bought the seeds and we plowed, broke the ground up and we had a, had a uh, plot out here in the garden, the lower garden. You know, at first we went by the directions. We're about the middle of, uh, right on the border of zone seven and zone eight. So uh, we're right there between those two and somewhere between the end of July, first of August when they suggest uh, growing them here in central Alabama. So yeah, we put them in the ground about August and we watered them, we did everything we could could do we got really nice vines really pro prolific vines that that grew and and they were they put on yellow flowers and we thought oh we, we should soon have pumpkins and you know we daily went out there and checked and there was just no, there's no pumpkins and eventually we just ended up plowing the uh the vines under and nothing so problem so of course you do we did research and we looked and we googled and we tried to figure out what was going on there um next year i decided we'd plant them a little bit earlier maybe they didn't grow in the season we watered them more. We tried to put things out there that we thought were so nothing. So um, recently, you know, we have our composted system out back and everything that's organic in our house, every piece of food, uh, vegetation that we don't eat uh, from the dinner table if anything were to go bad, it goes into a, a plastic bucket designated to go out to the chickens. So all the organic material is coming from the kitchen is going to this area where the chickens are able to pick through what they won't eat. They scratch and turn that compost. And then we add other organic materials to it that we use to fill up our raised beds. Uh, was it, it wasn't too long until we had little pumpkin sprouts coming up. I didn't know what they were at first. I, I, I knew we'd, we'd put squash, we'd put zucchini, we had put butternut squash, different things up there. So we really didn't know what we were growing. I thought it might be a pumpkin, but wasn't sure. And so sure enough, it is. Uh, to make to jump ahead and, and tell the end of the story, it, it, it is a pumpkin, and so at, and it was funny because at first I was I was thinking, well, I'll just get those vines out because they're um, they're over growing everything else in that bed. Um, we have radishes in there, we got carrots in there now, and uh, I wanted those to grow, and I, and these volunteer these volunteer pumpkins, I was afraid they'd take. So yeah, as you can see, they just these vines were prolific. They just started to grow, and they've done they've done exceptionally well. Huge, massive leaves. I'll walk over and see if I can give you a bit of comparison here. Um, I mean, these are healthy. This is my hand here. It's a massive leaf. So yeah, so we were just and, it, and as you can see here underneath this, these radishes are growing carrots are there um, but there's other radishes of a different variety on this side and you can see they're not yellow or wilty or anything they look like they're doing okay it's just it's bit that one off and as you can see here is the product itself I actually said in frustration last year if I could just get a pumpkin this big I would feel like I'd succeeded so the good news is we do have these pumpkins growing after two or three years, and um, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, this has been a, a sort of an experience for us with these with these raised beds. Everything grows really good in them, I think, and, um, and from our experience. And so this is uh, the second or third thing that have just accidentally happened in those raised beds that have been really good. So really high on my raised beds there and what they're doing. But, but it is absolutely awesome to get a pumpkin. Hopefully as the year goes on, we will be able to um, show you pictures of these pumpkins as they grow, hopefully. And I'm, honestly, I'm not a pumpkin expert. Um, obviously that, because I fell three years in a row. But um, I'm concerned of the heat of the summer. I do know that there's people in my region that I talked about and I talked to and, and, I, and they had shocked me because they had said they had their pumpkins out in early June which is way earlier than the seed packet set. So um, so hopefully we will have pumpkins coming on there and we can have some pictures and video of that. And it would be super awesome if we get to the fall of the year and we're able to pull some pumpkins from our own garden spot. And we love to use it for decorations. We set them around the porch area to kind of decorate for fall. And then obviously you can do things like you can, it's a squash basically, so you can cook it like a squash. You can also make pumpkin pies from it. Um, and obviously people cook the seed, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to show you some of that stuff. So that was pretty cool, I thought, about the pumpkin. So be looking for more videos as we, as we progress in the pumpkin adventure. Uh, another little cool thing about this, and I don't know how this will work, is I was afraid 
that it would hurt the radishes, but it almost seems that the radishes are doing really well growing in the semi-shade of the pumpkin leaves. Uh, and what I'm thinking is because uh, radishes are maybe more of a cool weather plant and they kind of sprung up this time of year, um, that maybe the shade is helping to diffuse some of the heat and sun so that it's kind of balancing out. And I know that some plants grow together pretty well, like cucumbers and, and beans, we're growing those together. So maybe squash and um, maybe uh, squash type plants and uh, radishes do well together. Hey, don't forget to comment and tell us what you think. And please subscribe below.